Hi guys, so I wanted to do a video today that isn't just for people that come to the gym, isn't just for people that come to CrossFit or people that are trying to improve their fitness through um, gym training. I wanted to build a video that was going to be for everyone, people that just wanted to get a healthier lifestyle, maybe for people that haven't done any fitness training before, that are unhealthy, that are overweight, and you haven't been active, and you're thinking about getting healthier, you're thinking about making some changes to your life, you thought, okay, now's the time, I've been inactive, I've been eating unhealthily, I've been doing everything wrong for my health for a long time, and now I want to make some changes to my life, how do I get started? This is for you guys. So, I think a mistake a lot of people make when they're trying to get fit for the first time or trying to get back into fitness after a long time out is that they try and change everything straight away. So they decide, okay, now's the time. I want to get fit. I want to lose this. I want to, I want to lose some weight. I want to get in shape. I want to get you know, healthy. And they try and do everything. So they'll sign up to a gym. They'll go into their gym. They'll sign up. They'll sign the forms. And they say, right, I'm going to make sure I get to the gym three times a week or I'm going to go to this class three times a week. Then they'll try and think, okay, what am I going to do about diet-wise? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Juice Plus or um, some other diet that they'll find and they're going to follow a really strict regimented diet routine. And trying to do all of these things, more often than not, they fail. It's the same when I'm coaching people at either Olympic lifting or teaching people golf, is that if you give someone five, ten things to do, not that ever give someone that many, but you give them say, five things to do, then quite often they'll go away and they'll come back having changed absolutely nothing. Whereas you give people one, maximum two things to do, then often those changes will have been implemented much better. This is how I would start for everyone who wants to get healthy for the first time. And if you are coming to the gym, if you are doing some fitness training and you just want to make some changes uh, to your lifestyle to get fitter, this is also a good way to start for you guys as well. So the first change you're going to make, and you're going to do this for the first two weeks. And this is the only thing I want you to do. The first thing you're going to do when you wake up in the morning, every morning, is you're going to drink a pint of water. And you're going to chuck a pint of water down before you do anything else that day. And then the only drink you're going to have through the day is going to be either water, or you can have a couple of cups of black coffee. I'll let you have one of those cups with a little bit of milk in, but I don't want any what I would call Starbucks or Costa desserts where you've got you know, a mocha chocka latte with maple syrup or whatever else they put in that stuff. Uh, that ends up with like 500 calories. Okay, none of those. Okay, so you're not going to get any calories out of your fluids. So for two weeks, the only change you're going to make is you're going to have a pint of water and limited amounts of coffee or tea are, are okay that day as well. But no fizzy drinks, no diet drinks. Okay, a lot of evidence towards what um, those aspartame and the, and the sugars, sorry, the sweeteners that are coming in, the polyols in those diet drinks, what they do to your stomach, what they do to your um, digestive system in terms of killing off all the um, good bacteria in your stomach. There's some evidence um, that there could be a link towards some brain um, diseases that can be caused from aspartame as well and some of the other sweeteners, um, which Obviously, there's counter-arguments from the manufacturers that there's nothing to do, nothing uh, in it, but it's not evidence that I like to see when I'm drinking a fluid, uh, evidence that it could cause some problems with the brain. So I try to avoid that anyway. And also, what tends to happen with your body when you have sweeteners is that it causes you to crave more sweet stuff because your body is kind of thinking, expecting to have some kind of sugars coming in from that, and you get nothing and it causes your body to crave more sweet stuff. So really, yeah, avoid any kind of drinks. And also, I put in there, and I've said it before, if you watch my video on breakfast, about fruit juices. Um, let's have no fruit juices, okay? So high in sugar, super concentrated, zero fiber as well. You know, fruit is good for you because there's fiber in that fruit, so that fiber can balance out some of the sugars in there. Um, and obviously we need fiber in our diet. Fruit juice doesn't have that. So avoid fruit juice, especially those concentrated ones. And all we're gonna have is water 
and then coffee or tea, but only a couple of cups of that. Nothing else. That's the only change. And why, why, why a pint of water first thing in the morning? Because often, well, through the night, you lose more than a pint of water through perspiration alone. And that's just on a normal evening, on a summer's evening, on a hot one, you're going to lose much more than that. And quite often, when people feel a bit groggy in the morning, a bit washed out and um, tired and lethargic and just you know, don't feel a bit, bit bleh, quite often... It's the dehydration that is the problem more than the need for coffee. So people have their morning coffee and they're going to feel like, oh, I feel t- 10 times better. And yes, of course, caffeine is a stimulant. So that's going to boost you up. But if you have the water to start with, you're rehydrating yourself before anything else. And that can do a lot towards making you feel better before you need that morning coffee, before anything else. So the first two weeks, pint of water when you wake up in the morning. No other sugary fluids. Only thing you're going to have is tea or coffee. If you cannot bear to only drink unflavoured water, then you can add a little bit of lemon juice into your water, maybe a tiny bit of salt, give it some flavouring. So it makes, It's what I would call my electrolyte drink. So my electrolyte drink would often consist of, if I was going to make electrolytes, um, where people sort of think, oh, I've got to buy electrolyte a powder or some kind of um, something that's going to be super expensive with normally some glossy logo on the front and a picture of someone, you know, running a race. All it is, basically, is salts and a tiny bit of sugars in those electrolyte drinks. In fact, some of them have no sugars in them, so some of them are just salts. So all you need to do to make your own electrolyte drink and also to make some water that maybe isn't just water tasting is add some lemon juice, a little pinch or two of salt in there. If you do need something a little bit sweeter, then I suggest um, a stevia, a little bit of stevia in there as well. Make it into like a, I suppose you could call it like a lemonade kind of flavor. I don't do that because again, again, I don't believe in that kind of having sweet stuff. It's just going to encourage me to want more sweet stuff. So I try to avoid doing that, but you can do that if you need to. So that's the only um, substitute I would allow for that water. Now, if that's too much of a change for you, well, come on. <laughs> what do you want? You know, I've given you two weeks where you have only got to do one thing, only got to replace one thing. If you are serious about wanting to get healthier, then that's the one thing I want you to do for two weeks. If you're not serious, then what are you watching this video for? Yeah? Go into something else. But this is about people that want to get healthier and they want to make a change. And, um, and, you know, and you get a lot of people come to you and say they want to make a change, I want to do this, I want to do that. And actually, when it comes to implementing those changes, they don't want to do it. They're not willing to actually uh, make those changes. So if you're not willing to make those changes, then, you know, fair enough. It's just you're not going to see as good a result. You know, you you can do it half-assed if you want, but you're going to do much better if you actually put something into that and um, put some value into what you're doing. So there's your first two weeks. Your first two weeks involves hydrating yourself better first thing in the morning and cutting out calories and crap from fluids. Okay, so no more Cokes, no more hot chocolates, no more milkshakes, no more smoothies, okay? Those innocent smoothies, yes, they taste delicious, but no, they're not particularly good for you, all right? They just taste delicious. Um, Cut all of that crap out and just stick to water. That's the best thing to hydrate on. Lucasaid Sport is not the best thing to hydrate on, okay? Just because it says isotonic doesn't mean shit. All right, pardon me for swearing, but it doesn't mean shit because um, water, like I say, with some salts in it, is equally as good, if not better, than having a load of manufactured rubbish in you. Rant over. After those two weeks, what are we going to do next? Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, but, you know, those two weeks, I need to lose those pounds, man, I need to lose pounds. Trust me, if you are one of those people that has you know, Costa lattes and has smoothies and has orange juice and has a Coke and has, you know, copious amounts of wine, you're going to see some changes just from doing that. And you're definitely going to feel different just from doing that. So that is going to make some changes. It might seem like a minor change, but it's definitely going to make some changes. Now, the next change we need to do, okay? And this is, you know, people that haven't done any activity, okay? But it will benefit anyone, if you're going to the gym right now, 
this will also benefit you. Is when you wake up in the morning, okay, so we're still on the morning time, we're still worried about what happens first thing in the morning, you control this, yeah? You can control what happens first thing in the morning, as long as you're in your own bed, or even if you're not in your own bed, you can control this yourself. Get up in the morning, drink your pint of water, put your shoes on, put some clothes on. I'll tell you that first. Go outside, and I need to go for a walk. 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes is all you've got to do. 10 minute walk. Just get some activity, get the heart going, get your mind in a better state. Take that 10 minute walk, come back, have your breakfast. That's it. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of activity whilst fasted. Um, just get your metabolism going, get your body going before you put some food inside it. Like I say, it's going to give you a percent of male well being, it's going to get you out and active. Uh, if you're going to the gym, it's a great way to uh, recover from the previous day's workout as well, just to walk around first thing in the morning, loosen your body up a little bit. So that's all I want you to do, okay? And you're going to do that for the next week. So you're going to still have your water, pint of water, go for a walk. If you wanted to uh, combine the two, save a bit of time, you could take the water, drink it whilst you're on your walk as well. Um, that is the next week. So we've had first two weeks, pint of water. Next week, pint of water, go for a 10 minute walk. Now, are you, I need to go for that walk, let's say 10, uh, sorry, 10 days, five days out of that week. Okay, I don't expect to do it every single day, but five days a week. So if you work Monday to Friday, why not do it on that Monday to Friday? Yes, oh my God, you need to get out of bed earlier, okay? You need to get out of bed 10 minutes earlier. That's fine, okay? Just do it. Just get out of bed 10 minutes earlier. Set your alarm 10 minutes earlier. Stop pressing snooze five times. Get yourself out of bed. Go for a walk. Okay, I'm not here for people's excuses as to why they can't do these minor changes to their life. Okay, this is at the point where you want to make a change. If you want to make a change, you do have to make some sacrifice, and that sacrifice is those 10 minutes of sleep. Or more likely, for most people, it's just 10 minutes of looking at the alarm clock, trying to get another couple of like sessions of closed eyes. So get yourself out the door, go for a walk. Now it's perfect time. I'm doing this video right now. So I'm filming this right now. The sun is shining outside. We're in June here in England. So there's definitely no excuse, and you can see in the middle of winter you might be making excuses, but it's nice actually, a nice winter's walk, nice and fresh, um, is another way, good way to go. So we've done that, we're doing our, our morning walk now, and I only want 10 minutes, I'm not looking for a lot, 10 minutes is, is nothing, you could literally either work out a route that's going to do 10 minutes, or you can walk 5 minutes out, walk 5 minutes back, whatever you want to do. If you're bored when you're going for a walk, why not stick a little podcast on, something of personal development to help you kickstart your day, maybe some motivational talk, and that's a good way to get started. So you've done your 10-minute walk now. We're into now week number four. So for the fourth week, we're going to layer on now. So for this fourth week, you're going to still have pine water. And that pine water, that's going to be constant now, okay? And that water all day is also going to be constant. Now, some of you might have had a couple of um, days where you've slipped or you've gone out and you've had a glass of wine, okay? We'll allow that, okay? If that happens, what you're not going to do is say, oh, I failed. Okay? If you've already failed in these first few weeks, that's going to happen. You have to prepare for that. I've talked about that before, about um, preparing yourself for when you do fail, okay? Not if you fail, when you fail. All that you need to do is the next day, if you've had drinks the night before or something, the next day, get up, drink your water, go for your walk, okay? Or if you don't do the walk one morning, what are you going to do? The next day, you're going to get up, chug your water, go for a walk. Get on it, okay? So I'm looking for five days out of a week. I'm looking for 10 days out of 14. So you're going to get up and do that, okay? Do it straight away. There's no excuses then. If you do it straight away, there's no excuses not to do it. If you try and delay it to later in the day, you're going to make excuses. You're going to find a reason. You're going to find some work you need to do. You're going to find something you need to do with the kids. You're going to find loads of excuses. Get out and do it, first thing. Week number four. You're going to look at what you have for breakfast, and you're going to make sure that you're having something that has a good source of protein, some fats, and ideally minimal carbs. Okay, not, I'm not a no carb guy. Okay, I love carbohydrates. I just don't think you need it for breakfast. Okay, unless you're doing a little workout first thing in the morning and you need a little bit of fruit to go in there, that's acceptable but we don't need to be piling on. Now, the fun, one thing we're not having for breakfast is cereal, okay? I don't care what they say on the side of the pack, if there's a picture of a grain on the side of the pack, or, you know, 
they put it in colors that look healthy, like some natural packaging, and they call it organic and, you know, freshly made from the mountains of a Buddhist monk. <laughs> well, I don't know, whatever. Um, cereals are normally packed with sugars. They're crap that you basically been put together and manufactured and processed. Uh, there's zero protein in them, we might say, with added protein, I suppose you might find nowadays. I, I see Snickers bar with protein, so I suppose there might be cereal no added protein. I don't really look at that aisle. Um, for me, a cereal is basically like a snack. You might as well have a packet of crisps or some biscuits, because that's, that's as good a quality as it is. In fact, you can even have biscuits for breakfast now. I've seen the Bell Beecher biscuits, um, that usual crap. So that, that ranks alongside that, yeah? So if you think Bell Beecher biscuits are a proper breakfast, um, then you're in that same group of you're making poor choices. And, and obviously, advertising is towards that. We have cereals because um, advertisers have promoted that as an easy thing to do. It's, it's easy to have in it cereal for breakfast. You just pour it in a bowl, pour milk on top. Um, but it's not a good breakfast to have, okay? We need to get some protein in your body. We need to get some fats to keep you satiated throughout the day. We need a breakfast as well. That's the first thing, okay? If you're not having breakfast, Start having breakfast. Whatever you can do is having breakfast. Now, some people might have breakfast you know, an hour later on in the day. They might drive to work and have breakfast at work. Okay? I will say that's acceptable, if that's the way you have, but you need to have a meal in the morning okay, to break that fast. Good example of breakfast would be Greek yogurt. I have Greek yogurt now myself. You might think this is disgusting, but I have Greek yogurt. I have peanut butter in that. Yeah, that's easy. All I've got to do is open a tub of Greek yogurt, pour it into a bowl, open some peanut butter, put a spoonful in there, stir it up, gobble it down. There I've got my proteins and I've got my fats. Job done. You could have Greek yogurt with some blueberries. You can have some cottage cheese in there. You could have eggs. Anything egg-based, obviously, is going to have a source of protein in there. Find something that's going to work for you. You can have um, some lean meats for breakfast as well. Bacon isn't necessarily that lean, but... You know, if you're having a little bit of bacon with some eggs, that's fine. Just be, be a little bit aware of the fat you're having in there. But I don't want toast and marmalade is a no. Um, cereal is a no. Biscuits, flapjacks, all of that crap. Anything that says breakfast bar, okay, and is available in the snack aisle of the supermarket is not a healthy snack. So just leave that aisle. That's the treat aisle. And you're going to have something healthy for breakfast. Now, you've got to find what works for you. Now, if the only time I'll allow a little bit of bread is maybe one slice of bread with some eggs and avocado on top of that. So if you need, you know, some people need that crunchiness underneath their eggs and like that, then I will allow that, okay? Not white bread, brown, or wholemeal seeded bread. It's quite a good way to go with that. But try to make sure that the portion of that the protein is bigger than the carbs. So proteins being the eggs, uh, that should be bigger than the carbs. And some element of fats in there as well would be great to satiate you. So um, if you're going to have eggs, are going to have some fats on there anyway. So you're going to be fine with that. Now that's one month, okay? One month of introducing yourself into your training. And all you've done so far is drink water, go for a walk, change your breakfast, okay? That's all I want you to do. Now, again, some people are like, oh, but you know, I, need to get, I need to get in shape. I need to get in shape. If you're looking to just get extreme weight loss, then you know, there's plenty of ways to do extreme weight loss. It won't necessarily stay off. You won't build habits that are going to make it healthy for you, and it's not necessarily healthy for you. So there's a difference between making a change for your own health and your own well-being that will then add to you dropping weight over time um, and build some good habits and just going on the juice plus diet or the cabbage soup diet, you know, because all of those diets, yeah, you're going to lose weight, okay? If you're a boxer for a weight, you're going to go sauna for, you know, two hours, don't hydrate yourself, you lose shitloads of weight. But we want to lose, we want to take a healthy lifestyle. So think about what your, what your, what your target is, okay? If you're just looking to strip weight down, you don't care about your health, then there's plenty of ways to do that that I don't um, advise. And I'm not a box boxing coach, so you know, I'm not getting ready for people for a weigh-in, so that's not my priority. But uh, if I needed to be capable to do that, then that, that would be definitely uh, an easy thing to do, but that weight would be a 
temporary loss. You're not talking about fat loss. You're not going to lose tons of fat in a very short period of time. Okay, that's where people go wrong. You're just going to strip out your glycogen stores. You're going to dehydrate yourself. Um, and as soon as you start piling stuff back on, you're going to be piling weight back on. After you've done that month, what you can start doing is getting yourself ready for some, time, some kind of activity. So something then to sort of get you active, get you training. You can start preparing yourself for that. So if you're not ready then to come along and find somewhere or someone who's going to coach you okay, and train you to get fitter and healthier and to move better, then you can start implementing some stuff at home. And I'm going to say very simple body weight stuff at home. As simple as doing some squats. So just standing and just squatting yourself down and up, okay? If, you're, if you lack the stability in your lower half, you might want to s basically squat down to a high chair, okay? So a, a sort of dining room chair, squat down and something like that. Um, or if you've got like a high box or something, you can squat down to in there. Something sim simple, like just doing, accumulating some squats is a good way to go. The other thing you can do is just some simple arm circles to start building the upper back. You can do exercises like T's and Y's and W because we want to strengthen up. I'll turn around now this upper back by doing some exercises through here as well. And stuff like press-ups and some plank, whether that's a kneeling plank or a full body plank, depending on how your core stability is. That would be good. I, I like to do uh, a thing called the RKC plank, which is where you hold your plank position and contract as hard as you can with your muscles drawing your belly button in, in towards your spine, really working to stabilize and hold tight for 10, 20 seconds. So it's more about core stability work rather than trying to hold a plank for like, you know, there's a world record on the plank is four hours, seven minutes, and the benefit is that to anyone, unless you're trying to make yourself a human bridge so people can walk across you. There's no benefit to holding anything that long because most of the time you need stability. It's for a fraction of a second when you do an exercise. So we're looking at uh, building those in. And I would set yourself just a weekly target. So for example, for your squats, you could say, okay, this week I need to do 300 squats, okay? Now that 300 squats can be broken down. You've got seven days in a week. So you could break that down. You could do 50, 50 squats a day for six days. You haven't got to do them all in one go. But you've just got to think, I'm going to accumulate that in my week. You could also say, I'm going to accumulate, let's say, so it's what, 300 squats. I would say maybe over that week, 100 press-ups. And those, a lot of people can't do press-ups, so you can elevate your hands, do them onto the kitchen counter, so hands up on the kitchen counter, chest pressing down there. If you maybe can't even do that, you can do it up against the wall. You could then do sets. And again, over the, over the week, you could do that. And then these, these, I like to do more upper back work than pectoral work, because everything we do in an office is... Uh, anterior in front of the body, so we tend to get in a position where we're a bit tighter here and weaker at the back there. Okay, so we end up in this postural position, so I much prefer to do the upper back work. So stuff like, um, and with these uh, T's, Y's and W's, what you're going to do is lying on your front, you're going to contract like this, okay? That's your T's. Do this one for your Y's, and then this one, so you see the shape I'm making here, for your W's, do those, and I would accumulate over time for each one of those positions from between 50 and 100 reps on those as well. So your squats are going to be working your legs, you're going to be working your press-ups for your back of your arms and your chest, and like I say, scale those appropriately, and again, for your T's, Y's, and W's, you're going to accumulate those, and that's upper back. A um, little bit of rear delts in there as well, so it's really postural exercise. And then for your RKC planks, you could just say, over time, I'm going to accumulate, over this week, I want to do 10 sets of 10 to 20 seconds. Okay, implement that over that course of time. So you're doing good movements, building out good depth in your squat, good movements in your press-ups, good movements in that upper back work. Very simple exercises, body exercises. I gave you those for a specific reason that you have no excuse, you haven't got to buy anything. So far, everything we've done is free of charge. Nothing is going to cost you anything. You're just going to put in that work over the course of, so so far we're up to, what are we up to now? This is like week number five. So into the fifth week, and all you're doing is some work there. Now I would say two weeks of work on that, moving through those squats, moving through those press-ups, moving through those planks, 
moving through those T's, Y's, and W's as well. That's going to give you a good, solid base to start. And that's the first six weeks of your change done. After you've done those first six weeks, then you might be thinking about it's time to get some coaching, okay? And you need to find a good coach, a good trainer, or class you can go to, maybe something that your friend goes to already is going to help to get started. Uh, to be honest with you, when you first start, yes, the idea would be to find someone who's a very good trainer, um, fitness trainer, strength and conditioning coach to, to work with you. Now, there's plenty of very bad fitness trainers and personal trainers out there. Very bad, okay? Shockingly bad. And I'll do, it's a whole, whole other video, a whole other um, uh, piece talking about that. In that a lot of people, they do this career, um, they don't do it as a career, they do it as a way to get cash in, um, just a little bit of cash for themselves, and they'll do their weekend course, sometimes even online nowadays, you don't even have to go and actually do any practical work, you can actually do it online, and you get absolutely no skills at how to work with people, no very little anatomical knowledge, just the knowledge you need to pass those exams at the minimum rate. Um, and if you're doing it online, obviously you can do that just by Googling it as you're going along. Um, and no real passion to actually develop your knowledge, and their, sorry, their knowledge and their ability to sort of train people. So they'll just go in and try and beast you. Um, often it's like, you know, they're, you know they're part-time trainers because they just won't come in with a plan. They'll just go and beast you. You know, be, be throwing stuff around. Uh, doing all kinds of crap, you know, they'll, their idea of giving you a good session is that you're going to be aching, aching like crap the next day, puking up maybe during the workout, um, and no thought as to the screening process, they're looking and assessing you as to where you're at, uh, building, a, building a plan of, where, of action where to go, and most likely there'll be no strength and conditioning work in there at all, it'll just be a pure cardio session. So you need to be really selective onto your trainer, um, very difficult to know, and I need to do a video actually to help people identify what is traits to look for in a good trainer, maybe how to identify that, something I need to actually have a look at myself and find a workout. Um, the best way to advise you people to finding yourself a decent coach, decent trainer, uh, because a decent trainer is a coach, um, a bad trainer is just a rep counter, and anyone that's trained with me knows that I'm definitely not a rep counter because I'm terrible at counting reps, so <laughs> that's the one job I can't do. Um, but yeah, so find yourself a decent uh, trainer. That would be the optimum. If you can't do that, if you can't afford that, it's not in your budget, then you need to find something that's affordable that you're going to go to on a regular basis, something you enjoy. So I don't care whether that's um, Zumba <laughs> or spin or I think yoga is a great thing to do actually. Um, so yeah, if you can find a good yoga teacher, that is a, that is a great thing for everyone to do um, as, a, as an introduction into getting fit. And I'm not saying yoga is easy, I'm just saying it's a great way for people to get into movement and into activity because it gets you moving better and that's I think the first start I think people sort of think they need to be beasted they need to be like dying um, to get a good training session but more often than not just doing something like that is going to be challenging enough combined with good eating and a healthy lifestyle so find something that you enjoy doing and it might even be uh, specifically fitness it might be just an activity you might go climbing you might do dancing you might do I don't know hiking anything that's going to get you moving more frequently at a slightly higher intensity than, than your morning walk that you're still going to be carrying on doing. Um, and that will put you on that next step to fitness. Now, you can obviously come join us here across the Children. We do our foundations program. So once you, if, you, if you feel like you're, you're not ready and you want to come and have a consultation and have a chat, and we can talk about that. Um, sometimes some of my clients might come in and they might do this, and we, we'll talk through. The foundations program we have is one-to-one -one sessions before you go into classes anyway. Um, and some people I just say, look, let's start with personal training, let's build you up, let's get you to a position where I think a lot of the time it's more mentally, just feeling mentally ready to do a group um, training more than physically. I think some people just, you know, they're not quite ready mentally to come into that environment. Um, and that's absolutely fine. So we do have the option here. But in any case, just finding something that you enjoy doing that you're going to stick to on a regular basis. And when you do that, still start small. Okay, don't sign up to... Uh, six a week CrossFit, okay, or um, some other crazy thing at the gym where you're going to do like super, super stuff. It's like something nice and simple, something you can do on a regular basis. Even if you do the, uh, the Couch to 5K program app, I mean, I'm not saying that running is the, the be on end all the fitness, it, it, it's definitely not, but it's, it's one way to get you moving better. 
uh, sorry, to get you moving. Um, I, I, I'm a big believer that you need to do uh, better movements, so strength and conditioning work, or even body weight movements where you're moving through a bigger range of motion than a run. Um, but if that's, if that's a way to get you started and get you into fitness, then that's great. But there's your start points. First two weeks, it's all about the water. Next week, it's about getting that walk introduced into your day. Week number four is about changing your breakfast habits. For a couple of weeks, we're going to have that good breakfast uh, and then start implementing some activity into that fifth week. So starting to implement those squats, those press-ups, those planks, those um, TYWs. And then when you're feeling ready, so somewhere in the middle of that second month or towards the end of that second month, looking at then taking that a step further with a fitness professional or with the class and so on and so forth. There's a good way, and I think the, the most sensible way to get yourself from doing nothing from a state of unhealthiness to a state of healthiness. Okay, if you've got any more questions or you want me to do a video on anything in particular, please put a note in the comments below, um, and I'll speak to you soon, guys. Thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel and check me out on Facebook.